you're creating a destination, a Lasallian destination here in some ways, uh, you know, almost, uh, you know, like a shrine, uh, a particular place of reflection uh, around the Lasallian mission. Back in 1904, the brothers purchased property up in Westchester County, what was known as Pocantico Hills, and they decided to erect their novitiate. It opened in about 1906. During that time, with the approbation of the religious superiors in Rome and with the superiors in the archdiocese here, they decided to commission some stained glass windows. And they went to Mazouet, which was a renowned French stained glass making company. As it turns out, the Mazoué sons were educated by the Brothers of the Christian Schools as well. So in and about 1906, 1907, these windows were created, and then in 1909 they were shipped here and installed in the chapel at the novitiate, which was St. Joseph's novitiate. There they remained for a couple of decades, and in 1929 the brothers decided to relocate their novitiate to Barrytown, New York, which is up in Dutchess County. And so the windows were removed and then reinstalled in the chapel there at St. Joseph's in Barrytown. In 1969, the novitiate was shut down there and the windows sort of stayed there in the chapel until now. I arrived at Barrytown as a postulant on October the 6th, 1952. I was very much attracted to the windows because uh, I had seen that type of window at uh, churches and so on, but these windows, they seem to have a message to them, uh, the message of St. John Baptist de La Salle, the founder of the Brothers. Those windows, we could look up at them and uh, they could kind of uh, help us to reflect. A wonderful uh, gentleman named Jim Casey and another gentleman named uh, John Hannaway. They're the prime movers. They got the ball rolling. Uh, we had been in our new offices for probably all of three weeks when they showed up and were enthused about these windows and what were we going to do to get these windows. And, and to be quite frank, they were very expensive and uh, I don't think we could have done it without the partnership uh, and the enthusiasm of the Manhattan College community. It all started by my visiting the chapel at uh, the former novitiate of the brothers in Barrytown, New York in 2002. And I was struck by the beauty of the windows, the windows which I had lived with for four years, I saw them every day. And I realized that uh, I had looked at these windows every day, but I didn't see them. I didn't really understand them. In the course of going back and forth to uh, that former novitiate in Barrytown so many times, I got to know the staff at the Unification Seminary there. And in the course of time, gradually introduced the possibility of them giving up these windows. I had asked the question uh, whether they would be willing to give them up to, back to the brothers and they eventually agreed to to give the windows back to the brothers and so over a period of time um, I had to get the brothers interested in this project as well. I started in the late 1990s to an organized reunions of brothers but more importantly former brothers. The windows were one of the big attractions for these people because coming back, they were anxious that they were gonna see these windows again. But there was a sadness in that these windows were still in this place that the brothers no longer owned. So the seeds were sown then of why can't the brothers buy the windows? One of the great things about the project is the fact that it represents such a fruitful collaboration uh, between the district and the college. Um, you know, this is a, a project that has been near and dear to the hearts of, uh, of many people for, for many years. It is true that the windows really are uh, part of the great patrimony of the, of, of the Dale South Christian Brothers. And it's obvious that the college is the place for these uh, these windows to be to be kept to be put on permanent display.
Well, these windows are a little unusual because they're French, and we don't want to cross too many French windows. Most of the windows we come across are German or English windows. And then we have the American, the Tiffany windows, and our traditional windows that have done over the years in this country. But French windows are very unusual. And to find these windows, to me, was a fabulous find by the school. But for us to have the opportunity to reconstruct, bring them back into the studio, and actually work a miracle, the fact that none of the glass was cut down to fit into the new openings at Manhattan College. That's almost incredible when you take windows from one location to another to try to make them fit. We were very fortunate to design the framing systems, which also have one inch insulated glass uh, to protect them and to insulate the, the size of those windows. But we made them work and fit, which I find quite unbelievable almost to say. But the glass itself and the painting of the windows is exquisite. And I've been doing this, I think, for about 56 years. I haven't seen French windows of this caliber. They're exquisite. They really are. We as Rolf Studio is very fortunate to have been commissioned to, uh, to work on these windows and to restore them to their original condition. As I said, it's, it's been a, a real pleasure and a, a thrill. These windows have been described as hidden treasures. They must be seen. We do not know of a single glass artist who could produce windows of this refinement today, especially on that immense scale. They represent the final blossoming of the painterly style in vogue during the 18th and 19th centuries in the spirit of oil painting on canvas. Their legacy is irreplaceable. Above and beyond the exquisite detailing, the windows demonstrate a sure sense of composition, color, and style. Such harmony is the work of a first-rate studio. I think what's particularly great about the windows coming to Manhattan College is that they're coming to a lively, vibrant teaching environment. And that in addition to being really glorious works of art in their own right and contributing to our liturgical space and just the beauty of the campus, uh, they're going to become teaching tools for us. It's a great privilege for us uh, to work with the district in order to be able to offer um, this service really to the LaSallean world. The purpose of uh, stained glass windows in churches, it was to tell the story of the gospel that a lot of people didn't have access to, especially if they didn't read. But it's also a great uh, opportunity and excuse. I belonged to a parish when I was in Philadelphia a number of years ago, and it was a wonderful parish. And uh, we had a magnificent pastor who, who often would use uh, windows as a, uh, you know, to kind of make the point of his homily. And uh, so I think even today, uh, they're a great opportunity to, uh, to start a conversation or to, to draw somebody's attention to uh, a particular point. Recently, we have come to uh, believe that the 10 themes expressed in the windows are the derived uh, consensus of what's important about Saint, the life of St. John Baptist in LaSalle and the, uh, the early history of the brothers. That uh, they, these themes, these windows with the same themes as are now going to be here at Manhattan College are in uh, a novitiate in France, just like they were put into the novitiate in Barrytown, with the expectation that the, the the brothers and the novices would learn from these uh, themes and from these windows as to what the life of St. LaSalle and the Institute was all about. Contrary to the way many stained glass windows you'll find in churches are, these windows not only tell a story in each window, but that the story is a flowing story through all of the windows. So it, it starts out with childhood and culminates with the glorification of LaSalle in, in heaven. I think from an artistic point of view, that's worth pointing out. And from a teaching point of view, not only can you teach the story of the Institute of the Brothers, the importance of the idea of bringing justice to the children, to the poor, 
as well as the opportunity for the brothers to meditate on, on the themes in these windows. Manhattan College has been connected with these windows um, really from the beginning. The LaSallean tradition which is, which is at Manhattan College and which will continue on, the value of having the windows here is that these windows tell a story, a story about uh, the history of the Institute of the Christian Brothers and, and, and the value that the Christian Brothers have brought to the world of education. My uncle was here uh, on campus in various roles from teaching to the presidency for I think nearly 30 years and uh, he had a special place in his heart for, for Manhattan. He always talked about Manhattan. When it came time to choose a window, there were I think three remaining and one of them, the one that I chose, is the approbation of the Institute of the Brothers by Pope Clement. He was probably in the 17th century. And I said to myself, well, that's rather appropriate here. Here's the Pope validating the Institute of Brothers where my uncle spent 70 years of his life. They're really a tangible reflection of LaSalle and his legacy. And I think they help remind us of our faith and our spirituality and our humanity. I couldn't be more excited, uh, nor could uh, the brothers, uh, that this will be, uh, you know, the host setting for these magnificent windows of, uh, of De La Salle. And uh, we are very much looking forward to this. This is something that continues to, uh, to bring us together. And it really will be very much a, uh, a community celebration, uh, not only for Manhattan College and, and the brothers, but I think for the wider LaSallean community of New York and uh, the region of uh, North America. It's just a great thing to, for the community to be able to open the doors to the chapel and say, uh, look, this story and uh, the way it has played out over the course of uh, several hundred years uh, has been important to a lot of people and these are these are treasures that is they they preserve something that is deep and rich and important to us and it's a great privilege for us as an institution I think to be in a position to preserve them and to make sure that they're available for many generations to come.